Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do click subscribe, which is probably over there somewhere on this camera angle. Today, guys, this is the first of a few videos I'm doing on capacitors. Now, we're going to delve fairly deep into capacitors shortly, but this video is just going to be talking about tolerance and drift. What do they mean and how do they affect the capacitors we put in our guitars? Well, if we buy a modern capacitor that was made last week, we can be fairly certain that the value that's printed on that capacitor is near as damn it what the value actually is. So if we buy a thousand picofarad capacitor, it's almost certainly going to be a thousand picofarads or fairly close. If we're dealing with vintage capacitors, however, two things we need to bear in mind. Firstly, the tolerance of that capacitor. Now, these old capacitors pretty much always have some things like plus minus 10% or 20% printed on the side. And that means when the capacitor was manufactured back in, say, the 50s, it was perfectly acceptable for the value of that capacitor to be 20% below or above what it says on the side. So if you have your 1000 picofarad capacitor, it could be as low as 800 picofarads or as high as 1200. So that will obviously have a fairly big bearing on how that capacitor sounds in your guitar. The other thing to bear in mind is that capacitors drift in value over time. So your 1000 picofarad capacitor might have been just that back in the 50s. It now might be 1500 picofarads because they do change over time. It depends on how they're constructed, where they've been stored over the years, whether they've been used and all those things. So both of these things mean we're never actually sure what the actual capacitance of our capacitor is when we put a vintage one in our guitars. So the only way to really know for sure is to use a multimeter. Now, if you haven't got one of these, they can be incredibly cheap. I got this one for about eight quid on eBay and they're absolutely fundamental when we're dealing with vintage capacitors to work out exactly what we're putting in our guitar. So today I've got a few vintage capacitors here lined up and I'm just going to measure what their actual values are to see how they've changed over time. If indeed they have at all. So the first one I have here is this old Jubilar capacitor which I believe is from the 1930s and it reads as 2200 picofarads which as I've got this multimeter measuring in nanofarads is 2.2. So if we put our probes on it here the actual reading is 2.2 exactly. So even though this capacitor is 90 years old and there would have been the tolerance when it was made it is exactly what it says on the capacitor. So we can put that in our guitar being absolutely confident that it is actually 2.2 nanofarads. So here I have two identical, what are these? TCC Super Metal Pack 2000 picofarad capacitors. So in theory they should be exactly the same, they're the same age, I'm guessing they're from the 60s or the 70s. So again we can measure them here. So this first one measures at 1.74. So that's the tolerance on this is plus minus 20%. So that's within tolerance. This other one here should in theory be very, very similar, but it is actually 1.89. So again, it's within tolerance, but there is a difference between them. Now, these are the old 1956 aircraft spare capacitors made by Sprague. And I absolutely love these. I've got six in this old box here. Three of them are in my guitars and I've got three left here. And these are 4.7 nanofarads. So if we measure these, 4.54, 4.55 and 4.73. So again, they're all fairly close. I mean, one's slightly higher, but it was probably manufactured like that with the tolerance. So again, they're fairly, fairly close to what they say they are. Now, the last lot I have here are these Plessy Metal Mite capacitors, and we're back to two nanofarads again, and there's a 20% tolerance. So if we set these up here and we can measure them, the first one is... 2.2 exactly, give or take. So that is absolutely spot on. This one here is so look 1.9, give or take. So that's a fair bit lower. And this one is ah, hang on, if I can get this to work, these are notoriously fiddly. Uh, 
nearly three. So this one here is supposed to be two and it's almost 50% over what it says on the side. So this just proves that if you get three capacitors that are seemingly identical with the same values, made at the same time, same factory, from the same batch, nowadays when we're dealing with the vintage ones, there can be a massive swing between them. So going from a 1.9 nanofarad capacitor to a three nanofarad capacitor will massively depend on, you know, it will massively affect how those capacitors sound in our guitars because they're massively different values. Whether we're using them as a fixed tone capacitor or on a tone pot or as a treble bleed or something like that, the difference in those values is going to have a significant effect on how they sound. So that just goes to show that when we're dealing with the vintage capacitors, we have to have a multimeter because we never really know what the actual values are. So I think that covers tolerance and drift. If you have any more questions about this, please do comment underneath this video and let me know. I love talking nerdy guitar stuff with you. And in the next couple of episodes, we're going to be delving a lot deeper into this sort of stuff. So thank you for watching guys. I hope that was interesting. Please do hit subscribe wherever it is and I will see you next time. Bye bye.